murderer. I tire of maintaining our innocence. I will relieve you of your burden. Hi there guys and girls and welcome to my video about Mortal Kombat at E3. Uh, I'm sure you guys have been waiting for this uh, a while. I've had a lot of comments, people asking me to do videos. The reason why um, I'm doing it now is because um, basically what was going on was I would get up in the morning, I would go to my volunteer work thing that I have to do, and then I would come home like 6.30 my time, and I'd do a stream for like six hours, from like 6.30 to like midnight. I did this stream, and I did that like all the, the three days after E3, and just spoke to people, and we just general clannish behavior and spoke, spoke about Mortal Kombat off and on and, and stuff like that. And by doing that, then I'd maybe stay up to two, watch a press conference, then go to bed. That's how crazy it's been this week with E3. Now, I could have not done one of those six hour streams and maybe pushed a video out, but the reason, the other reason I didn't want to do that was because they kept announcing things. Like, E3 that whole week is like, you know, they play the game, they show the game a million times, and more and more info comes out slowly. It, it Most comes out straight away, most, but the little, little details come out later, like maybe like no one knew all three of Cassie Cage's variations, and then by the end of the show we knew what all three were. Stuff like that. So, I wanted to do the video now, after, after all the mayhem, and I really did have uh, fun doing the streams too. Um, even though, you know, there wasn't even not that a lot of people in the streams, maybe like 30 people or that's all it showed really. It, it, I was doing it at a bad time, a lot of people said, you know, a lot of people were asleep in that. In fact, the time that I'd finished, about 11, 12, was when most of the people in the US were waking up, but I just couldn't do it any later. I was already like wrecked <laughs> because I'd had to stay up and watch the, well I didn't have to, but I stayed up and watched these press conferences and then I did this these chats and then and then by that time I was just ruined I would go to bed and then I'd have to get up early and I did that like three days in a row and by the third day I really felt it you know but um yeah so doing this video now uh, about Mortal Kombat um there's a lot to talk about a lot um first I'm just going to talk about a bit about a few of the little E3 things, and you, maybe you guys don't care about this, but I'm just going to throw it into this video just for fun. They had a, a they had two sh two types of shirts at E3, and I'm just going to compare these to the Mortal Kombat 9 ones in my opinions on them. So there was the staff shirt and the giveaway shirt. The giveaway shirt was a, a grey shirt. Uh, on the back it had the spine, and on the front it had the dragon, and said who's next. And honestly, it felt pretty, pretty. I don't know, not shit, lackluster. Um, the spine looked cool and that, and the, col the, the colours didn't work, like black and grey, just, ugh, just... When I think about that MK9 shirt, that just, it was a black shirt, and had bright red colours, you know, red hole, and the, the heart falling out, for quality down the side, it just, it, the whole thing was stylish, this just looked like they mocked it up at the last second, put something on the front, put something on the back, the dragon, the spine, you know, it just felt real, sort of, we don't give a shit. You know, um, I don't know. Uh, that's just my opinion on the E3 shirt. The MK9 one, definitely better. And then there was the staff one. The staff one was sort of cool in a sort of basic more way. It just said combat on the front, um, which was cool and all. But when I think back to the MK9 ones again, the MK9 shirts were badass. I really wanted one of the MK9 staff shirts. They were like a, a, like a work shirt, like a button-up collared work shirt. And it had like a, a square badge here that said Mortal Kombat. And I think they even had their name embroidered under that, like Steve Baran, you know, or Ed Boon or whatever. It, the shirt looked like really, really cool. It was like representing the brand in a sort of professional sort of way. I like that. It, it did look cool, you know. Um, yeah, so that's just about the shirts. I mean, there's probably a whole lot of you out there that don't give a shit about the shirts. But I, I'm like this. I like to talk about everything. So, um, they had a big booth, Warner Brothers, they had a big booth uh, this year. Um, I don't know, I think only one fan site went, and that's TRMK. I think they were the only ones there at, uh, at E3. I was trying to figure out if any other fan sites went. Um, yeah, uh, I think he's putting up an interview. 
I haven't. I still haven't seen it. I think it's sound only or something. I don't know why you'd go there and then get sound only. Personally, I mean, I could do that over the phone or Skype. You know, <laughs> just say if you're there, why not film it? He filmed his shoes, so it's not like he didn't have a camera. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, like I said, I don't know if other sites went, but they had this big booth at Warner Brothers. It looked really wide. Um, I don't know what it was like inside um, because obviously I wasn't there this year, but um, they were rotating. Uh, they were showing four things. They were showing Batman, Mortal Kombat, sorry, Batman Arkham Knight, uh, Mortal Kombat X, the Witcher 3 and Shadow of Mordor which are apparently all really good titles and it was like swapping around and yeah um the there was the demo so you, I think it was similar to um 2010 you go in and watch the demo and they showed you a whole lot of cool stuff um a lot of the stuff you saw in the demo or not a lot there were a few things in the demo that were not seen outside like in the GameSpot demos or the IGN ones which I'll get to later stuff I really wish I could have seen um, I'm not sure how long the demo was. I'm not sure if there were any, you know, extra details told in there. I don't think there were. I think that must have been really strict with cameras this year because I haven't seen one, you know, video, not one on YouTube. So that must have been like fucking Nazis. Like that must have been all over that shit. Warner Brothers, you know, stopping that. Um, which could which could be good I'll be honest that could be good guys because um, as you know when I went there uh, everyone that went in the booth filmed and no one gave a shit and then when I took my photos they told me I couldn't put my photos up but all these unknowns that went through the booth you know f thousands of journos they put everything online so it wasn't fair the fan sites got fucked over for being fan sites if I had walked in there like my name's Mr. X I could have filmed everything and put it online, you know, but yeah, that's so, so it was good that they sort of stopped that because if there were fan sites or other sites there, that would, it's a way for them to go through the proper channels. Um, it, yeah, it looks like uh, that wasn't allowed to be filmed at all, that demo. Uh, and then there was a playable demo and that seemed to be only played by very few people. Um, it seems like, again, uh, Warner Brothers were locking down who could talk to people like I've noticed there's not a lot of interviews online there's a lot of people talking but they saw the demo and then they're showing the GameSpot footage which I personally think is really shit um, it just shows that Warner Brothers were not providing the proper assets for this for this announcement because you got a whole lot you, you can't you can't restrict journos and then not give them assets as well. Because it, let's say you restrict them, like only, you know, 50 people see Ed. Um, at least then those people who saw it can then say, put up an impressions video. This is what I saw and it was really cool. And then they have footage. They can put it with that. But all they got was screenshots and they got them at really late. Like after E3, the screenshots came out, which is like crazy guys. The way E3 works is Practically, as soon as the press conference is over, the stuff that they talked about there is available for download. But Warner Brothers didn't do that. They didn't put anything up. No trailers, no screenshots. Till like after E3, or the last day of E3, some screenshots appeared. You know, which is, which is really shit. And, you know, like I said, apparently only a handful of people could speak to Ed Boon. Um, I only saw like GameSpot, IGN, Giant Bomb. Um, maybe there was a a few others that had an interview with Ed Boon. That's like four or five people, guys. You know how many people go through E3? And, um, oh, maybe TRMK, sorry. Um, then you've got, you know, Steve Baran did a few interviews I've seen. He, I saw two interviews with Steve Baran. I saw one with Paulo Garcia. Um, me being Total MK, I like to see everyone's take on the new game when they're talking about it. So, all these team members have been on the team a long time. You know, Steve Brown is a, a, an art director. Paulo Garcia is a game designer. He does balancing and working on the game. And they're, they're all very cool dudes. So, you know, I don't just go just to, you know, hear what Ed has to say and that. Ed's, you know, the top of the, uh, what I say, the head of the dragon. He's the top of the ladder, you know. But um, 
everyone has their contribution and everyone can comment on something that someone else can't comment on because everyone on the team has a, a separate role. Ed Boone's creative director, Steve Brown's the art guy. So if you ask Steve Brown an art question, you're gonna get a really good answer. And that's the key to a good interview, is to know who you're talking to and, and make sure you throw a few questions in there that are specific to their role on Mortal Kombat. Um, yeah, so it seemed like Warner Brothers were very restrictive who could speak to team members, which I think is shit. Um, they, they also um, announced that this game is so great in 1080p and 60 frames a second and blah, blah, blah. And at first I thought the announcement trailer that they released was 60, but um, I've been in, in talking to someone recently about getting a 60... Um, 60 frames a second script up for my Total Mortal Kombat website coming back so I can show all the MK9 trailers that were 60 in 60 because you don't get the full experience when you're watching it in 30. You're losing a bit of fluidity. A lot of people say you can't see it but you can see the overall motion. And I, I really did think that this announcement trailer was 60 but they'd actually dropped the frames to 30. Why would you release that? Why would you release that? That makes no sense. You go on about how great it is in 60, and then you put out 30 FPS trailers. Anyway, um, yeah, so that, if you guys are excited about that, that's a feature that's coming soon to Total Mortal Kombat, if I can get it all locked in. Um, 60 frames a second playback scripts for Mortal Kombat. So that means all the ones MK9 that were 60, and, all, and any future MKX ones or whatever. I'll have a script, it's a HTML5 script because Flash is locked to 30 FPS. HTML5 can support 60. So, yeah, that's something I'm, I'm currently talking with someone about getting going. Um, so, yeah, no, not very good with the assets. Uh, piss poor, really, Warner Brothers. Uh, I had people, I, I know a lot of journalists from my experience just going to E3, and I had them contacting me saying, can you give me anything? Me. Because Warner Brothers weren't supplying them. Now, you might have had a great reaction, your 8 million view reaction to Mortal Kombat, but why restrict what could then be even more talked about? It makes no sense. It really doesn't. You could uh, have a whole lot of people talking about Mortal Kombat. This is so cool and putting footage out there and screenshots and, and that's just going to be better for you. But instead, you're holding back and you're only letting fucking GameSpot and IGN and people like Giant Bomb and you're only letting those people put the news out. That's fucked. That's really fucked. Um, and doesn't matter if you love, hate, IGN, Giant Bomb, GameSpot, whatever, you know, I actually like Giant Bomb. Um, but my point is that the journalists that took the time to go to your booth that want to promote your game and you repay them with this. You don't give them anything. You don't give them any B-roll. You don't give them any screenshots, no trailers, no artwork, no PDF supplement, nothing. Zero. I mean, I've been going to E3 uh, 2006, 2008, 2010, I, I had an, uh, an, an asset disc or an FTP login for all those ones. The, uh, 2010 was an FTP login. It had screenshots, trailer, PDF supplements in different languages, Italian, Spanish, French, you know, English. Um, that was good, you know, because you didn't think anyone was going to come there. You didn't think a fan site would show up. Well, I showed you guys. <laughs> You know, and then in 2006, of course, Midway, God rest their souls, um, you know, uh, they gave us these beautiful asset discs that had artwork on them and trailers and, and it was for everything they did too. It was a great way for the, for the word to get out about their other products. You know, you got a disc and it had everything on it, not just Mortal Kombat. It would have like, you know, whatever, Batman and Witcher and it would have everything on one CD. You know, it was fucking awesome. They don't do that anymore. I don't, I really don't understand. And it's just Warner Brothers and it's just Mortal Kombat. Because all those other games I could get stuff straight away for. Witcher, Batman, no problem. 
Anyway, I didn't mean to go on about this, but but it is it is a big part of, of E3. It really is. So, now I'm going to talk about the game. Um, enough of that uh, negativity, but let's talk about um, the game itself. So, the E3 demo consisted of six characters. Scorpion, Cassie Cage, Kotal Khan, Ferrator, Devora, and Sub-Zero. Now, as you know, two of those characters, Scorpion and Sub-Zero, are classic, and then we have four newies. Now, the thing about the four newies is two of them share a, a name that we know. Obviously, Cassie Cage, Cage, she is the daughter of Sonya and Johnny Cage, and Kotal Khan, obviously Khan, maybe some relation to Shara Khan. So, Devora and Ferrator are, from what I can tell, 100%. Uh, new. When when they first showed this um, demo, like when I saw the announcement trailer, Scorpion is observed in the forest, and even though I didn't really like the rap song much, that trailer was like, oh my god, fuck yeah! It's just it felt hundred percent Mortal Kombat. When the actual uh, Sony thing started, and they showed, you know. I, I, you saw at the start of here, the, the start of this video, that Scorpion comes out. That's like probably my favourite thing in the whole, everything they've shown at E3. Just that sort of dialogue. Um, and then they showed Scorpion and Sub-Zero fighting. I'm like, cool. And then bang, we see Devora, And she's stroking a, a caterpillar or, or some sort of insect. And I shall examine it, you. Or, or something, whatever she says. I was like, huh? <laughs> like the the first time I watched the footage, I watched it on my phone because uh, I was I, I was out, I was in KFC, I was literally in KFC watching it on my shitty iPhone. Um, yeah, the the new characters have a very injusticey feel. They really do. Um, now that's not a particularly bad thing. Um, obviously, Netherrealm worked on Injustice, so a lot of that Injustice feel is going to spill over into the next MK. But um, the problem I got is that Ferrator felt to me like Bane, and that Devora felt like Raven or Killer Frost. They're just, just looking at the body shapes, just just re reminded me straight away of those two. And uh, I kept saying it in my first stream, it's Bane, it's Killer Frost. And then someone said, actually, Raven is a better thing. And I'm like, of course, Raven with the hood and everything. You know, and um, that doesn't matter though. But, but here's the problem. When they first showed the characters, they didn't tell us who they were, why they were there, and what their connection to Mortal Kombat was. And I needed to know that as a fan. I needed to know why uh, Ferrator, um, where he was from, what, what his you know, motivation was. I need to know that stuff. Because I like the story of Mortal Kombat. That's what keeps me coming back. It's not the fatalities, honestly. I'm sort of over fatalities, people. I really am. Like, they're fun. But for me, the thing that I like about Mortal Kombat is the story. I always want more of the story. And the way MK9 ended... We wanted to see how that story continued. So when they showed these new characters, I just felt like I did not know anything about them. Nothing. There was nothing like that I could say, oh shit, he looks a bit like Suhao. There was there was nothing. That there was no connection. So the Sony conference showed a lot of gameplay. People got really excited um, and it finished showing Scorpion's fatality that they but they cut it off, they didn't show um, the whole thing because that's apparently really violent that fatality but um, then the next day they showed more hands-on gameplay and Ed Boon opened up about the characters so he said uh, and I'm gonna go through the I'm just gonna go through uh, one by one Scorpion uh, Scorpion he didn't talk a lot about Scorpion but he said you know Scorpion's that classic character blah 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 but you could tell from Scorpion you know he's just murderer comes out fights Sub-Zero Scorpion is still after Sub-Zero you know, that Scorpion seems to be his motivation. So straight away, cool. Mortal Kombat feel on it. 
Next we had Cassie Cage, and, and this was the first thing that Ed Boon sort of spilled. Cassie Cage was Sonya and Johnny Cage's daughter, which made sense because Sonya and Johnny Cage became close by the end of the last Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 9. Um, but she's grown up now, and then Ed Boon explains that there is a time-lapsing story in this Mortal Kombat. So it might may start at the end of MK9 and then go up to 25 years ahead in, in the future. Then we have Kotal Khan, who is apparently like a god, if we look at his variations. They, they all say blood god, sun god, and war god. They've all got god, god, god on the end of them. So, um, I'm guessing he's some sort of god, but we, we, no one really elaborated on his story. But my theory is that he may be an outworld god. Maybe like the equivalent of Raiden for outworld. Um... Then we had Ferrator. We, we didn't really hear anything about Ferrator other than the fact that it's a big dude with a, and Edburn kept saying little lady on his back, which made me laugh. Um, and little lady tells the big dude what to do sort of thing or stabs him and he gets angry and pain and gain sort of features. And, and then we had uh, Devora, who's like an insect woman. She has all the bugs and, and that. Again, we didn't really find out much about her story. Um, and obviously Sub-Zero who's now Sub-Zero has a, an interesting thing because he said uh, after Scorpion says murderer he says uh, what's he say we are tired of uh, proving our innocence and a lot of people have speculated because of those words which Sub-Zero is this is it both Sub-Zeros did they merge into one why did he say we and our like multiple and instead of saying I am tired of proving my innocence so a lot of people have been speculating on that. So that's the story of the of those characters. Now they all have variations. Variations are gameplay, uh, gameplay um, mechanic. Variations are a gameplay mechanic that allows you to do better mix-ups. So Scorpion and bear with me, I just got to remember them. Scorpion had um, uh, oh man, Inferno. Hellfire Ninjutsu. I think that's it. Um, and Ninjutsu is like sword based. Um, Hellfire is all fireballs, throwing fireballs and throwing. And then there's Inferno where he's like on fire all the time or something. Cassie Cage had Spec Ops, Hollywood, and Brawler. So Brawler being more like takedowns, physical attacks. Um, Hollywood she wears, apparently she has sunglasses and wears a. She has glasses and, I don't know, she's a bit more cocky or something. I'm not sure about that one. Um, Spec Ops, she calls in missiles all the time. She can call in bombs at any time during the fight to bomb them. Uh, Kotal Khan, uh, as I mentioned before, there was Blood God, Sun God, and War God. War God had a huge sword, massive, which gave him, which gives him reach. Sun God gives him some sort of, like, you know, God-like sort of glows and... I think he can do like, you know, throw fireballs and has like sort of sun-based fire attacks and stuff. And I think uh, War God is just, um, just sort of his standard sort of fighting. I'm not 100% sure. Then there's uh, Ferrator. There's, oh, now this is going to be hard to remember these. What were they? Um, shit. They were... Hmm. What were Ferritors? I can't remember one of Ferritors. Give me a second. Sorry guys. Uh, yeah, Ruthless, Vicious, and Lackey. I think Ruthless is where Tor, the little lady, stabs him and makes him mad and, and do sorts of thing. Vicious is just, I think, standard sort of, you know, full on, in your face sort of attack. And Lackey, I think, I think Lackey is where it's just Ferra and Tors in the background sort of cheering him on, but she's not. In, she doesn't stab him and make him do things. I think it's just him. Uh, and then there's Devora. There is a um, brood mother, um, swarm queen, and... Um, The other one. Um, someone just told me last night, I'll be honest, I couldn't find it anyway. Let's have a 
I'll look up, quick look at my phone. <laughs> Venomous. So, uh, brood mother. Oh, I could be mixed up on. I'm. I'll be honest. I'm not 100 on these ones. Uh, one of the ones she like throws bugs at them, like drops them on the ground. They run into it and and that. And another one of the other ones is where she uses her like she has like like a prey mantis legs that they come out of her and they stab and you know, I think that's the other one. And um, venomous, I'm not sure. I'll be honest, I'm not sure. Sub Zero had uh, Grandmaster, Unbreakable, and Cryomancer. So Grandmaster he has the dra the Link Way Medallion. I'm not sure what the abilities the abilities are. Unbreakable, I think he does a whole lot of ice related stuff, like his shields and stuff. And Cryomancer, I think, it's just normal throwing freezes and, and that. So so they're the variations. So basically, the reason they did it was, uh, you know, in MK9. Um, when people started to learn the game, they started to figure out that Kung Lao was the best or whatever, whoever it was, you know, was generally the best. And then people would just use that character and just became about using the best character. Whereas, you know, like my guy, Scorpion, I always want to use Scorpion. And I hate the fact that in all the old Mortal Kombat's, Scorpion's a shit character, you don't use Scorpion. You know, I, I want Scorpion to be good because I like Scorpion. So this is a way they've sort of fixed that. It allows me to be Scorpion and change up the move sets and maybe pick something that's actually better against other characters. That's the, that's the reason they've done it. So that's very cool. Respect for that. Um, and Netherrealm's taken a um, a big risk with adding new characters. Now a lot of people have said they don't want the new characters. They want the old characters, you know. But Ed Boon said they didn't just want to reskin Mortal Kombat. They wanted to do something new and fresh. And I respect that, but. Don't worry, because there are going to be classics in there. I, I think from what the way it sounds, it's going to be more new characters than classic, though. But I still think there's going to be maybe half or just under half classics. And Ed Boon's also hinted at the fact that those boxes on that select screen have a lot of gaps between them. They float, so they can move around or, or get closer together and allow more boxes. So I think there's going to be heavy on DLC for this, for this game. Next thing, now now that I've gone through the characters, next thing I want to talk about is um, the HUD, or what we call the heads-up display. Um, I am not a fan of the HUD at all. At all. Um, the HUD is the life bars, the timer, and the um, special bars, you know, the enhanced breaker um, x-ray. So... It looks real wispy and skinny and grey and and boring. It looks fucking boring. All the old Mortal Kombat's have been red and green life bars and the clock's been like gold and there's been little gold wind medallions and even the last one, that special bar, the it had X-ray. It looked, it didn't look big. It was bigger than what we got now. It just it looked better. It just looked better. This looks like real in, non-intrusive and small and fine and I, I don't like it. I really don't. Nah, not a fan. Get that shit out of there. Or at least let me have an option to change the HUD. Please. You could do that and that wouldn't even take you much time. I know you could do that in other room. I, know, you, you could, I reckon you could have a new HUD option worked up in a day. Seriously, it would just be, you'd just be changing the interface, all the scripting behind it would be the same, you'd just be changing the graphics and the look. You know, and most likely, maybe the hug will change anyway, because I know no one's a fan of it. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is the text of the game. You know, the round one, the fight, finish him, fatality, uh, Scorpion wins. They've got this new, strange font, and I'm really, I'm, I'm really having trouble liking it, like, as a fan. Because finish him has always looked the same in Mortal Kombat. It's always been jagged and aggressively popping out of the screen, you know, and, and that's in every Mortal Kombat, like every single one. And now you decide to like have it sort of low key. It sort of fades in like a transition that I do on these videos. It fades in real slow and just says finish him. 
and the eye sort of goes and it's like really it just it, it feels it feels like because the HUD's like this and the text is like this it feels like um, the game's trying to be non-aggressive it's like it's trying to look like it's not that sort of game but it is under the surface because then when you do a fatality you're like oh my god but like it feels like it's trying to be on top it doesn't look like it's a violent sort of game or something. It doesn't look sort of evil or aggressive. It's like they're trying to change the style. It doesn't look like it, but it is. And I'm not a fan. I think you need to put that back. Because you can't have nine games where it's like, FINISH HIM! And then be like, FINISH HIM. It just it feels weird. It feels so weird and strange. It really does. I don't mind, I'll be honest, I don't mind the fatality when it says fatality because, like, even though I'm not the biggest fan of the, the fatality font, it, like, sort of fills with blood. It sort of looks cool, you know? But I'm not, not a fan of the round one or the fight or the wins or the finishing or finisher. Not a fan. No. Nah. The HUD needs to change. 100%. Or you need to give me an option to have a different HUD. Yeah, yeah. it's a lot. It's a, it's a great party game. Yeah. Too, you know. Oh. <laughs> oh well, it happens. Next, I'm going to talk about the arenas. So, um, the thing that I really like about the arenas in MKX is the fact that they're um, they're really wide now. So you, you even see it on the select screen when they're picking their arenas and then they finally pick one, it's like that big. And then when they pick it, it goes and it expands and shows you how wide it really is. And you can see in that little preview, you can see the whole level. And that's really cool because I've always thought some of the Mortal Kombat arenas should have been wider. And they feel like really wide now. And I'm like, that's fucking badass. That's cool. That's exactly what we want. You know, and um, there's three. Excuse me. Snow Forest, Outworld Marketplace, or Outworld Market, sorry, um, and Cove. Snow, I love. Snow Forest, sorry. It's not Outworld Living Forest. It's just a normal forest, an Earthrealm forest. Snow everywhere. There's heaps of dead knights in the background, if you look carefully, scattered around. On the right, there seems to be a door to some sort of ruins or some sort of place. And my theory is that this is Sub-Zero's Lin Kuei headquarters. This is my theory. That that doorway leads to the Lin Kuei. And maybe these knights came down to attack the Lin Kuei and the Lin Kuei killed them. And then Scorpion killed the Lin Kuei or something. I don't know. This is the theory. Um, the, the interactives in the level, because now we, ha we have exactly what I said, the Injustice interactors are in, are in the arenas now. So in the snow level, it's all the branches. You can rip them off, smash them over the people's heads. You can swing off them. Yeah, so that's very cool. I really like the snow forest. Feels 100% Mortal Kombat. Now, let's talk about uh, our market. Our market, um, I'll be honest, not the biggest fan of. And I'll tell you why. It's There's some cool stuff in the background. I like that I can see that castle. I'm guessing that's Shah Khan's castle in the background and that. Um, but the foreground feels busy, like this big tiger that they keep talking about in the arena, it's sort of. And then there's this thing behind it, this torture device or something, like behind it, which is cool. That's very outworld, you know. But it's got the problem is that it's got the injustice um, feel on the arenas. They, the arenas feel warm. It's too much orange, too much brown, it's too sandy. It's too Egyptian. It feels warm and nice. Whereas the outworld I know has always been dark and brooding and blues and dark blues and purples and dark purples and very sort of seedy and mysterious sort of color tone and dark and lots of dead bodies in the background like I'm thinking in the wastelands of my head right you know things like that uh, the Deadpool you know acid like if the outworld felt dangerous felt very very dangerous and honestly even that tiger there 
it doesn't feel dangerous to me when he's just sleeping. And that torture thing in the background, I can't even see anything. But when I think about MK9, when I saw Shao Kahn's arena, not only did we have Shao Kahn in the foreground, we had that fucking tormentor in the background, like, and it was like fighting off people and fucking, and you're like, oh my God, I hope that thing doesn't come near me. It felt dangerous, you know? And I don't, I'm not getting any of this. I'm not getting any of this from these levels. It, it feels like when you watch a movie and they go to Egypt and they're like, you know, and they're walking down the Egyptian streets and they're market shopping, like Indiana Jones or something, Raiders of the Lost Ark. You know, it, it felt like that. It's like, you know, you see all the apples and stuff and you can throw the old lady, yeah, cool. But it didn't, the environment didn't feel dangerous. And there might be a reason for this though, guys. There may be a reason. Maybe Outworld is safe now in the future. And that, that could be what they're going for. If that's the case, I might be able to accept it. But as it stands, it's too warm and fuzzy for me. Now the cove is interesting. The cove doesn't feel as warm and fuzzy as Outworld Market. You got like these big, huge waves in the background and you got this, this skull cave with his face on it. It looks sort of deadly, sharp rocks. You know, there's a ship there on fire and, and you're, you're fighting on this dock. It looks pretty cool. I'll be honest. It's, it definitely doesn't feel as warm and fuzzy as, as market. But the thing that's interesting is the screenshots they release, some of the screenshots, the color tone is totally different. So in all the, the, the live demos they showed, it had almost a almost Egyptian sort of outward market feel, but pulled back a bit. There were a bit more grays in it and a bit more, you know, because the rocks and stuff are gray. But there's a screenshot where there's almost no color tone in it. Like, and I'll show you, bang, here it is, um, where it's like real dark and gray and like that feels more brooding. And I know I said it in a video, um, when it's gray, it feels like Injustice. Injustice was gray in that, but, but you can do that in Mortal Kombat and get away with it depending on what you're showing as well. And I think you need to find that middle ground between what's gray and what's color toned and what's overly color corrected. Like, you know, what's got a sandy sort of Egyptian warm feel. Because when you use browns and oranges and that, you're you you're t you're t subtly telling someone that this is a warm or f a warm feeling level or you know a nice feeling stage. Whereas when you're showing something like you know, and the perfect example is if you guys look at spinal footage from Killer Instinct, that's a level that has rocks in the background and a pirate ship, and that feels dark. That felt fucking cool. So. That's my feelings on the arenas. Um, you know, like, I don't know if it's gonna change or not. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah. If, if there's no, if, if it turns out there's no reason for Outworld Marketplace to be like that, like if it's just, oh, it is like that now, I'm gonna be really annoyed. You know, because like, the Outworld I know is, is Deadpool, Combat Tomb, Wastelands, Living Forest, Air Combat, The Portal, Khan's Arena. That's the outworld I know. And all those levels are fucking dangerous. You got the Living Forest, you got the trees, <laughs> the trees are gonna eat you. You got the Deadpool, you got Acid, you got Combat Tomb, you got all them spikes on the roof. You got Wasteland, there might not be anything, you know, that's a, an, an imminent threat to you, but there's that lingering thing that's ha what's happened in the past in the background with all the dead bodies and the skeletons and it's just a reminder that Outworld is a fucking dangerous place. Then you've got um, the same with the, the portal, you know, might not be so imminently dangerous but very creepy the way it's guarded and stuff like that. You got the air combat, you got the floating monk up in the sky and the clouds moving real quick. Outworld's sort of a different sort of place. It's a reminder of that. And then you've got obviously Khan's Arena where, you know, Kintara and they fight and that sick crowd in the background, and, ah, they cheer on Shao Khan and Kintaro. It's a reminder that you're very far from home and you're in a very dangerous place. And at the moment, I'm not getting this with Mortal Kombat X. All right, so now let's talk about some of the gore of MKX. 
of what people really like the shock value so there's x-rays and fatalities I'm going to talk about start with the x-rays um, scorpions uh, x-ray is you know um, he sort of pings them up in the air he throws the harpoon it digs into their skull you see the skull fracture then he throws them back down you see them come and they hit the, the base of the neck here and you see the spine sort of shatter the back that's scorpions x-ray Cassie cages we have not seen and I've heard people describe it like Maximilian dude the, uh, the uh, fighting game expert um, he said it's probably the most disturbing x-ray seen um, she hits them so hard in the balls that they and I think you actually see the nuts you actually see the balls this time because as you know in MK9 uh, it was sort of mannequin style, there was just there no definition there. But uh, apparently now you see two nuts hanging down and they explode, like And uh, we haven't seen that, we've just, people have talked about it. Um, Kotal Khan, he sort of, he gets some, uh, I'm not sure where he gets the stick from, but he, he sort of sticks it in, in their, through their head, then pulls it out, sticks it through their neck, and then he like twists it like, which to me was probably, out of everything we saw, that one for me was probably the, the hardcore one. That one felt oh, gross. He sort of, yes, the way he just <laughs> twisted it around in the neck was, was pretty brutal. Um, Ferritor, again, sort of pings him up into the air. And then the little lady jumps off the back and she's got those spike things on her arm and straight in through both eye sockets like that. Like straight, straight into the eyes. Um, Devorah, sort of a stick insect thing, sort of gets him up and she... She impales him with one of those sort of leg stick things through the back of the head, right through the head. Uh, and Sub Zero, um, he grabs their guts, freezes it, pulls them out. Which now it's like frozen, like like a lance. Then sticks it in their eye. You know, so <laughs> pretty fucked up stuff. You know, um, to be honest, it feels almost a bit too much. Like X Ray was sort of. X-ray was sort of subtle. There's something else I sort of liked about X-ray. It was um, you just saw the bones breaking. I, I sort of thought that was cool. Or the, the kneecap, even in that teaser trailer, the kneecap going like that or whatever. You know, I, like, I sort of like that. This feels like it's sort of gone too far. You know? <laughs> but um, that's me. Now, fatalities. Uh, they show pretty much all of them at E3 except Scorpions. And he has the worst one. Uh, which was disappointing. So scorpions, I can tell you a bit about it because they showed the first part of it, but not the, the really gory end bit. Uh, that was what we saw in the Sony press conference. So he, um, scorpion, he blasts him, uh, blasts him with a fireball. Whew! Goes, blasts a hole in their stomach, a literal hole like that. And you can see all the bones broken and all the gore. And there's like little... You know, it's burning from the fireball. It's just gone through the little fires in there. And then the heart literally just falls down. So you see it in that hole. And it's hanging there. And it's one of the aortas is cut. And the blood's spraying out like that. And then they drop to their knees. And then Scorpion, he literally cuts their face off. Like, boom. And you, that's where the trailer ends. But from what people have described after that happens is their face literally falls off like that and their brain oozes out of their eye sockets because, you know, cut past the eyes, or past the eyeballs. So the brain just like falls out and the tongue, you see the tongue going, eh, while that's going on. Apparently it looks pretty fucking disturbing. But I want to see this. You know, a lot of people were asking to see it in, in the streams. I were tweeting, show Scorpion's Vitality! And they're like, yeah, we'll do that. And they, no one did it. It was fucked up. Um, Cassie Cages is, she, um, she shoots them, bang, bang, and then she sort of headshots them and they drop down on their knees. She blows a bubble with her bubble gum, pulls the bubble gum out, sticks it in the hole, and then the hole blows a bubble, a blood bubble, and it fills up and then pops and blood goes all over their face and then they fall over. Um, Kotal Khan's is, he cuts a hole in their chest, rips their heart out, holds it up and, and squeezes it so it explodes in his hand and then he drinks like all the blood goes all over his face and that um ferritor um the big guy picks up picks up picks you up like that and then the the little lady with her knife things again she goes over their back and literally uh cuts them from head to from head to groin 
like that, like a straight down the middle, and then they literally just split apart, like, and you see the cross section, both cross sections. So you can see the brain and the heart and the lungs and the guts, and it's all literally being cut like right in two. Um, Devora is probably my one of my favourite new fatalities. Actually, I, I like Devora's fatality a lot. It didn't feel like it was going too far. I felt like some of them were just like way too far. Like, not like I'm sickened by it. I, it, it just feels almost a bit too silly now. I don't know, I, I sort of like it a bit, stepped back a bit, you know? Um, I like hers, hers is good. Um, she summons a swarm of bees, she, the swarm of bees throws it at them, it goes through their chest so fast, it makes a hole, then comes back through this side, makes another hole here, and then the bees just go all over their face and just literally devour their face, like, like that. And you see the skull and the jaw falls off and the skull just falls on the ground and they fall over and then she just, just crushes the skull and just steps on it, which I thought looked really fucking badass. Um, Sub-Zero's is, um, he makes a hole in their chest, I've forgotten how, he fills it with ice, then he smashes it, reaches in, grabs the spine, breaks it in two, and, um, and I think that's it. And they just fall over. Um, how does that one end? I think that, I can't remember how that one ends, but that's it. But you know, I really wanted to see that scorpion one. You know, and they didn't show it, and yeah. For, yeah, so that's what I think about the fatalities in the x-ray. You know, the x-ray, yeah, it's back, it's more brutal. Fatalities are back, they're more brutal. Um, for me, it doesn't have to be always more brutal. It just has to be creative. Show us something new. You don't have to go hardcore, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of people describe the Scorpio one as pretty disturbing, but I, I want to see it so I can be the judge. That's one of the reasons I really want to see it. But, um, but yeah, th that's how, how the gore is for MK9. One other thing regarding fatalities is that Ed actually announced, I uh, forget which video it was, but he did announce that there would be a new ality in Mortal Kombat X, but he didn't say what it was. So, could be a uh, brutality, an animality, friendship, babality. Could be something new. But uh, Ed did say there would be a new ality in Mortal Kombat X. All right, we're pretty much coming to the end of my um, thoughts on the uh, E3 demo of MK9. Uh, last few things I want to talk about are music and sound. Um, now, as you know, I, I'm a big fan of the Mortal Kombat music. These demos, I could barely hear the music. Uh, I have one video here to show you where we can hear a bit of the music, but it felt so low and so faint. I couldn't make it out. I couldn't understand it, and it didn't didn't feel like it was very good music. You know, which I'm very disappointed at. As you guys know, in my expectations, I was hoping to hear Dan Ford and do a few tracks, maybe, or something. And I'm not knocking the guys who make the music on the game. I'm not. I just wasn't feeling what you showed at E3. And maybe I need to hear it on its own better, or or something, I don't know. But it just wasn't there for me. And I, I love the music in Mortal Kombat. It's big for me. 
the music and the levels have to go together. Those Mortal Kombat 2, Mortal Kombat 1, Mortal Kombat 3 levels are just so good. The, the subway music goes with the subway level. The Living Forest music goes with the Living Forest. You know, the, the pit music goes with the pit in MK1. It's very important. It's, it's got to be immersive. And for me, I was not feeling this in the E3 demo. So I'm hoping that uh, that's corrected in the future. As for sounds, the sounds in this demo were incredible. Lots of ice breaking, bone crushing, gut splattering sorts of noises. Very good range of the sound effects. Um, really was enjoying the sound. It sounds very crunchy, very, very awesome. Um, so yeah, you know, I'm very happy with the sound. Uh, I've already sort of spoken about the graphics, but um, these next gen graphics and this 1080p and 60fps look amazing, like fucking awesome. You know, and with these new, you know, Xbox One and PS4s, we can do, or they can do, really good stuff like shadow casting and lighting effects and, and they've got this gore engine that they've been going on about that they can talk about all this stuff. So, uh, or show, showcase all this stuff, sorry. So, I'm really excited. The, the look of Mortal Kombat, apart from the warm look that I spoke about in the levels, like the, the, the capability with their graphics engine is like, it's fantastic. But, but yeah, um, from what it sounds like, you know, again, going a bit back to the story, it sounds like we're not going to get as much as what we want. I think the fans were expecting a Mortal Kombat 4 story. I mean, MK9 set that up with Shinnok and that. Um, I think fans were expecting us to get maybe the MK4 Deadly Alliance story. I, I know I was. I thought they were going to retell MK4 Deadly Alliance without the shit stuff. Um, you know, and Ed said they didn't want to reskin the game. Like, you know, it takes balls to do that. I, I appreciate that. But, but sometimes you just got to give the fans what they want. Sometimes they just want that reskin game. Because we were so happy with MK9. There was... The, we, we didn't want anything new. We, that was like... What you gave us was like the best thing you could have given us. It was a retelling of the old school MKs with so much more level of detail added, you know. And you could do that for MK4 and Deadly Alliance and Deception. But I understand we are on a different timeline now. We are in different events. And maybe, you know, by the time I see your story mode, it'll more make sense. So we just have to give it time, guys. Don't hate on it now. I know a lot of you in, in my screenshots uh, video were hating on the new characters and things. I've told you what I, what I personally think of them. Um, I, I haven't made up my mind on anything yet. I need more information on them. And you guys should be like that too. Don't give up yet. Because there could be reasons for, for this. And this is the way they always start their campaigns. They slowly pull the string to unveil or unravel more, more and more as the game approaches release. That's the way it works. They've What they've shown us now is nothing. And they've spoken, they've said there's going to be a few really good modes in there that they um, can't really talk about. And I think this is the reason why they haven't confirmed the date. They've said the date is 2015. And I heard in one video somewhere, I heard someone say early 2015. So they, that's, their, that's what they're aiming for. So... Um, I know Warner Brothers always release their games in April. So Mortal Kombat was April, Injustice was April. Um, the reason why they're probably not confirming April, or not even, because they didn't say that much, that might even be a slip of the tongue, saying early 2015. The reason why is because they're probably working on these modes and they don't want to lock anything in as they might run overtime with it. And I think they're not going to, it's not going to be a midway job. They're not going to rush it out, you know, <clears throat> with missing features. They're gonna complete it and then get it out the door. So it might be April, might be May, might be June, it might be July. Might even be December, you know, but 2015, we're gonna get a really good MK game. You know, maybe some people mightn't like some of the content, but the game's gonna be super polished and a lot of fun to play. So I'm really looking forward to seeing more about Mortal Kombat X. Thanks for watching my video. I'm sorry I, I, I ranted so long at the start about the Warner Brothers stuff, but it really does get under my skin. And not just it's not just a personal thing anymore now. Now I see other PR people being fucked over, you know, and it's just, it's rotten. 
it's really rotten you know um, but what do you do what do you do all we can do is just uh, wait it out and hopefully they'll get their act together and get more assets out there for everybody so thanks for watching everyone and I hope you all enjoyed um, my coverage and my streams and my my videos on Mortal Kombat X watch this space for more there will be more um, I'm going to be going all out with Mortal Kombat on this channel from now on. <clears throat> the, um, the Resident Evil 4 playthrough is finished. I've got to finish the Sonic one. That's almost done. Once that stuff's done, it's just pure Mortal Kombat. Nothing else. So I'm going to be focusing on MKX a lot this year. And next year, possibly. So um, that's my goal. So if you haven't already, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe, like this video, share it to your friends. Um, you know, your support is greatly appreciated. So thanks again, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out. One other thing I'd like to mention, I, I thought this was really cool, and a lot of people are still spec skeptical about this, was during one of my chats, the second one actually, from night two, I'm chatting away, and at my time, it's like 10 a.m., right? Time in LA is like 5 a.m. Someone pops in the chat called noob underscore D, Hey Luke, and I'm like, wow, I'm like, hi, noob D, sort of thing. You know, I'm thinking, obviously this guy's just called himself noob D, he's not really Ed Boon or anything. You know, he's just trolling, and then everyone's saying it, fucking troll, 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 fucking troll, you're a troll, you know. <laughs> Even I was sort of skeptical about this guy. But then, he, he started to, he just started to talk like Ed. Like, if you've listened to Ed long enough, and believe me, I've watched a lot of Ed Boone interviews, I've talked to the man, the stuff he was saying sounded like Ed. He only said about five things in the room. He only stayed 10 minutes, and then he left. And he didn't he didn't do any sort of trolling, any sort of, you know, I'm Ed Boone sort of thing. He, he put up his Twitter link, you know, because I think a lot of people were going, you're not Ed Boone, and maybe that's why he did that, you know, and... But I'm sure that was him because he he said um, Paulo told me about your stream the other night, and I know Paulo follows my my Twitch account, so that that's true. And I haven't, I mean, I may be told a few people, no f fans, like a few like Mortal Kombat sites, maybe that Paulo followed my Twitch account. Um, so it's not like anyone really knew that. And I don't, as far as I know, I don't think people can see who's following my Twitch account. I think it's only me who can see that. I might be wrong about that too. I don't know. But when he said that, I thought, okay, that's that's really Ed Boon. And it made sense. It was like 5 a.m. That'd be the time you'd probably get up to start your day, your E3 day. You'd get up, you know, have your shower, do all that. Have, then go downstairs, have your breakfast, talk to your PR, see your co-workers plan what you're going to do that day and blah 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 and he literally said like he said hey Luke how's it going he, he's put up his Twitter link and then he said um, he goes we've got some stuff later to show you with IGN and that that was true that actually became true and then uh, and then he said there'll be something something that you'll like within a few days and I'm like wow what the fuck could that be you know and it's it's honestly it's been a few days and I haven't heard anything maybe Maybe I overlooked something, I don't know. Maybe something got delayed or maybe they're going to announce something still soon. And um, the last thing he said, I've got to go get ready for the show. And um, he said, take care, Luke, or have a good day or something. Or see, you. he said, I'll see you soon, Luke. And then um, and then he said, John Edwards says hi. And I've also met John Edwards too. He would have known that, you know, and, and then he left. You know, and everyone was like, oh my God. <laughs> and, and a lot of people were still scratching their heads. Was that really him? For me, that was really him. You know, and the, on, the only little bit of doubt I got is, I mean, maybe if, if someone did find out Paul was following that account or something, you know, um, the only way I'm going to think it's not him is if, if I directly ask Ed or Paulo if that was him and they say no, then I'll have to admit that it was a troll. But, but the... We're talking five, you know, six lines. He said six lines, no, nothing trollish. He said, this is what's going on and see you later. And boom, and left. And it just doesn't make any sense that someone would troll like that. That makes no sense. So for me, that was Ed Boone in the chat. And a lot of people are, were really freaking out about that because there was like 30 people in my room and we were in the room with Ed Boone, you know. And um, 
that was really cool. And if you're watching Ed, I really appreciate that. That was that was a lot of fun. <laughs> that gave me a little story. I, I told a lot of people that. Oh my god, he came in my room. Like I had people, my friends texting me. Was that really fucking Ed Boone in your room? I'm like, I'm pretty sure it was. You know. <laughs> so, um, so that was very, that was really cool. Yeah, that was really awesome. I'm not even at E3, but he still stopped in to say hi, and and that was cool. Yeah, yeah, I really did enjoy that. So. So yeah, that's my little story for, that I that I have just had to refilm this because I forgot to say it earlier. But but yeah, that was cool. That was Ed, Ed's a very cool dude. I like Ed a lot. <laughs> so thanks guys.